Hello, my friends, and welcome to the latest spin. I'm Mike Spinner, student athlete, World USA. And uh, happy Tuesday, not happy Monday for everybody. Um, we're coming at you, or I'm coming at you on Tuesday. Um, why Tuesday this week? Why not Monday? And the answer is very simple. I mean, it's, it, it sounds like the dog ate my homework, but I was just too busy to do a video yesterday. Not, not in a bad way, all right? It's not like it was, you know, hey, Tim, I can't do my video because I have too much holiday shopping to do or, you know, the tree doesn't look right or, or something like that. I had so many interviews yesterday that a video was just not possible. And I, I mean, it. like Tim put something on social media. Um, it was a, an interview every hour on the hour all night long. And it kind of developed late in the day. So I just didn't, by the time I realized how busy last night was going to be in an awesome way. Um, it was too late to record the latest spin. So I text him, hey, we got to do Tuesday this week. We, don't, we we like to do it on Monday for consistency's sake. We had no choice. And it was awesome, though. It was one interview after another, after another, after another. It was crazy. It was busy. It was a little bit tiring. But I loved it because all the interviews went extremely well. I think we got ourselves a big crop of new travelers coming at us um really exciting time for us we're super busy right now we're slammed with interviews for all of our sports it really is a fun time here but we had to sacrifice the latest spin on monday we're here on tuesday and it's a good thing i hope that happens a lot i want to be so filled with monday meetings that maybe maybe we have to do a little latest spin wild card at some point uh but it was a fun day i didn't you know you know what time i ate dinner i'll give you a second I ate dinner or breakfast this morning, to be honest. I'm at that age, you know, once you hit like 30, um, yeah, um, I'm at that age where if you eat dinner too late, you're not sleeping that late. So um, dinner was breakfast this morning, just the way it is. Um, but yeah, let's let's get let's get right after I got an awesome what in the world today. But let's um let's get right into to the real business of what we're doing here. First of all, special welcome, Elijah Vasquez, men's basketball, Shayla, Shayla White, women's basketball sorry Brandon Sova men's lacrosse Ashley Williamson women's basketball Kayla Thompson women's basketball and Mason Tran men's basketball so excited to have you with us cannot wait to see you this summer now another piece of student athlete world kind of business um two more things number one I I've been getting the questions already what is the holiday schedule um for student athlete world and, and the answer is the work continues okay um if you are looking to do an interview during the holiday break, um, go right in and schedule. Um, I am not one of those people that needs some downtime. Let's keep those interviews coming. Now, will I take some hours off? Obviously, yeah. You know, my, my son doesn't have school, so I'm going to be a dad a little bit, but I want the interviews to come in. So right now, I have not blocked off any time, including Christmas Eve and Christmas, although that may change. Um, because I'm not quite frankly, Christmas day. I'm, I'm not all that busy. I, I have an interview scheduled on Christmas day. If that's what you need to do based on your schedule, go for it. Um, but otherwise there's not going to be, Hey, the office is closed for this week. Um, it, it's just, I, I gotta be honest. I, I really like my job. All right. So I don't need that week off to recharge. I'm recharged right now. Yesterday was exhausting and I'm ready to go. I have, I, I think another handful of interviews coming up today. I don't need time off. I love what I do. All right. So bring, bring those meetings on, bring those interviews on. I'm here. The other thing, and this is just because of the volume of interviews and questions that we're getting recently. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Um, I get the question a lot about, I interview an athlete to travel with us. The, the, the person I'm interviewing gets offered a spot on tour. One of the follow-up questions we're getting a lot of is, can family travel? The answer is a gigantic, massive, enormous yes. Right. We build our tours around the family experience. So not only can any athlete bring a parent, they can bring both parents, they bring all their siblings, their girlfriends, their friends, aunts, uncles, whatever. We don't limit guests. And if you look at the itineraries on our website, studentathleteworld.com slash tours, go through the tour itinerary. My experience is your typical adult will look at the itinerary and say i'm glad my child is going i want to do this too that's why we don't limit guests 
So if you're watching this today and you're thinking about interviewing or you're scheduling your interview, you're still working on your application, understand this. You can bring anyone you want from your family. Okay, we don't limit it. And having now done a tour myself back in June, um, I can tell you that our tours are an amazing family experience because let's put it this way. Most of the time when a family goes on vacation, the family's on vacation and the person does all the work is, is on a trip, right? So, you know, I'm taking my kid somewhere, okay? He, he gets all the fun. I'm the one driving. I'm the one planning, making reservations, stuff like that. Um, it's tiring. And so this is the type of situation where, you know, if you're a parent and your kid is competing for us, you get to watch them international competition, which is awesome. And you get to enjoy all the fruits of our tours, all the amazing stops, the incredible excursions, the food, stuff like that. You get to enjoy all that without having to worry about renting a car, reserving hotel rooms. Um, you know, figure out where your next meal is, things like that. You enjoy 100% of what we do. And you're a spectator watching your child compete internationally. I cannot think of a better family vacation, all right? And, and so by all means, as you're contemplating our tours, understand we build our tours for families. And I'll keep repeating this on this video. I'll do it every week if I can, uh, because I think it's a big selling point and a big attraction for our tours. So hopefully that, that helps you out if you're, if you're scheduling an interview with us coming up. Now, today's What in the World is sponsored by Jack's Hamburger. I don't know why. And those of you on United World Games with me, Jack's Hamburger, right? How awesome, right? I've been thinking about that place a lot. Now, I'm not going back to United World Games this year. Um, as I announced last week, I'll be in Spain and Portugal. Um, I'm, I'm going to miss a lot about United World Games. I love that tour. It was amazing. Jack's Hamburger is up there on the list. So I'm really happy they're a sponsor. Um, welcome aboard, Jack's Hamburger. If you want to sponsor um, the latest spin at all, and you, you can pay in cash, just Mike at studentathleteworld.com. We'll add you to the list. But here's what I'll say for Jack's Hamburger. If you're going to United World Games, once you get to the Sandworth in Klagenfurt, Austria, leave the front door, make a left. You walk about two minutes, it'll change your life. Lori Khalil, if you're watching this, and I know you are, I am requiring you to go to Jack's Hamburger not once, but at least twice during United World Games. Okay, because you're going to love it. So it's it's not a real requirement, but I think you should go. Now, moving on, what in the world, NCAA as a whole. Now, I'll tease one thing before I get to it. My my second item for what in the world has nothing to do with sports. You're going to like this. But the sports-related what in the world. Last week, a district court judge in West Virginia put a two-week pause on the NCAA's policy that transfer portal is a one-shot deal. So before this ruling, the policy was you can transfer Division One, Division Two, transfer once on your own, anywhere you want, better NIL money, better playing time, whatever it is, you can go. Once you've transferred once and you want to transfer again, you have to sit you, which is kind of fair. But there are a lot of groups trying to get rid of that one-year residency requirement for lack of a better term. And this district court judge in West Virginia – put a two week pause on this requirement and may rule to abolish the residency requirement. Okay. I, I cannot begin to stress how that is a death blow for division one athletics, maybe even division two, maybe even whole NCAA. All right. I, I'm sorry, but when you combine NIL money, which is out of control, you have teams now getting carps, like literally, I saw a video, I don't know the school, a gymnastics team, I think, or a volleyball team, that recently every single member got a car calling it NIL money. It's out of control. When you have unmitigated NIL money combined with unmitigated transfers, meaning someone can transfer every year, okay, you don't have college athletics anymore. It's over. All right? Could you imagine if professional sports, pick your sport tomorrow, became every single athlete for every single team is on a one-year contract. It would be chaos. Right? The money would be even further out of control as it is now. You would have super teams being developed. You know, I'm an owner. I'm going to have, you know, basketball team and pay everyone max salary for a season or just five starters max salary and then, then a weaker bench for a season. You know, a, a great NFL player every year is going to try to make $100 million for one season. It would be out of control. That's what could happen in college athletics 
if this becomes a reality. It wouldn't even be right. You know, and, and the biggest thing, I think about two things. Number one, I think about smaller program athletes who have a big season. And the example I'll give is a little bit older, but Randy Moss. He played at Marshall University. And essentially, I think Chad Pennington was his quarterback. For a while, Marshall was a real program, like real meaning a national caliber program because they had players like that. So Randy Moss had a couple big years for Marshall. And now, imagine that now. He would have one big season for Marshall and then leave which means that all the work the Marshall coaching staff did to develop him would then go towards essentially Marshall being a farm system for bigger programs. That happened all over the place. It wouldn't just be football, basketball. You know, FDU had that recent NCAA tournament run. Okay, not long ago it was UMBC. All right, you have these NCAA basketball teams that get to March Madness and they go on these big runs. Suddenly now this program that no one ever heard of before is going to lose their whole team to transfer portal because those kids want to make some more money. It's, it's going to be follow the NIL money, all right? And that's one. Number two, it's going to be coaches can't coach anymore. Hey, you know, my quarterback threw five interceptions in the game. I'm going to bench him next week. Okay, coach, I'm quitting the team. I'm going to transfer. Like the coaches can no longer hold the players accountable because they're going to transfer, all right? And it just, it, it means coaches. Coaches, it's harder to be a college coach now than it's ever been at any level. All right. I did it for a long time. Um, it, it's it's really is a challenge for many reasons to be a college coach. That just adds another layer. Because if you're a fantastic coach and you're at a school that doesn't give much NIL money, you have no chance to win. You have to leave. But speaking of coaching, if there's unmitigated transfer and unmitigated NIL money, what's going to stop a poorer program, a weaker program? Sorry. All right. A, a program has no chance, no hope, but maybe has some money, like Wisconsin. All right. What's going to stop them? From giving like Nick Saban a hundred million dollars for one year and say, bring your whole team with you from Alabama to Wisconsin for one year, win his national championship, then go on your way. You probably retire with a hundred million. All right. There's nothing stopping this. And now what this means is these college programs are now fully business. There's no more education. But here's the issue. The bigger issue besides the economics and the lack of accountability and the fact that coaches won't be able to coach. What about the education here? And I've always disliked people who would say something like, well, college athletics really don't about education anymore. That is nonsense, okay? Because right now, the backup punter at the University of Alabama is not going to play in the NFL. There are thousands, if not tens of thousands, of Division I college athletes who will never turn pro. All right, the University of Wisconsin, are any of those guys turning pro? No, all right? You know, they're, they're lucky to be playing college football. I know Tim's going to say, well, you know, J.J. Watt and T.J. Watt did play at Wisconsin. That's great. I have two words for you, Tim. Ron Dane. Right. Heisman Trophy winner, University of Wisconsin, went to the Giants, first-round pick. I don't think to this day he's picked up a first down in the NFL. All right. So let's not talk about Wisconsin producing NFL players. All right? But you have athletes. You're the seventh man on the bench for whoever the best college basketball team. That, that guy is probably not going to the NBA, maybe to Europe. But my point is this, what is not being reported when you talk about transfer is when you transfer colleges, whether you're an athlete or not, a lot of your credits won't transfer. You know, you're transferring with 60 credits, maybe you get 50, maybe, some cases less, because the college you're transferring to wants your tuition dollars. So for that athlete who either A, is going to transfer to a different school now every single year trying to make NIL money and he doesn't have the opportunity to turn pro, he will never get a degree. Now what we're saying, oh, maybe he uses an NIL money to go back to school, but that's not the point here, all right? B, that athlete who um, really has no chance to turn pro at all, which just isn't good enough, all right? Maybe they make a bit of NIL money, but they're transferring to get a better playing opportunity. Again, their credits are not going to transfer. So they may play four years. Maybe in five years of college football, the redshirt year, you know, have 60 credits and then what? And maybe, you know, half a million in the bank, which I would take half a million in the bank. But my point is that this is just wrong on every level because there still are many student athletes out there. You have top tier quarterbacks, and I read somewhere probably making seven, eight, nine million dollars a year in NIL money, and that number is just going to grow. They're fine. You know, they'll graduate with 50 million in the bank if they make it in the NFL. Great. If not, they have quite the nest egg to get going. 
But what about the thousands who are not going to be millionaires after that? What about them? Right. There have to be rules in place to protect the programs, protect the coaches, protect the lower level programs. Right. Marshall University football is one example. But you know, when you think about it, there are 300 Division I college football programs. I don't know how many there are. There are maybe 25, maybe, that could pay top tier NIL money to track kids. So they're going to become the top 30, and everyone else is going to be left in the dust with unmitigated transfers. And so what you're going to have is, is a true form system. It's not going to be college athletics. Anymore. And quite frankly, I tune in to watch to see when lower tier teams can be top tier teams like March Madness. It's it's the best time of year. All right. And you're just, you're not going to have this anymore. And I just think that this one judge's ruling could ruin college athletics completely. College athletics has had its ups and downs. I hate the NIL money thing. I hate the fact that you have players choosing colleges based on NIL money. Yeah, I think this is wrong. All right. But with, with the inability to kind of rein in transfers, you don't have college athletics. Anymore. It's a business. And it wasn't a business before because of the volume of players who were actually trying to get it. Now it's changing potentially in a horrible direction. This is why I spent my career at Division Three and Division Two. And I don't think I'm getting back into college athletics, but if I were to, it would be at those levels. Division One just doesn't interest me because I chose, even this job here, I my passion's work with student athletes and giving student athletes opportunities that they did not have before. I love student athlete work for that. I love working in college athletics for that. And, and I don't want to be in an environment where you're, you're now basically working in a worse version of professional sports, which is what this has all become. Next item, some holiday cheer. Not really, but first of all, Right now, if you're thinking to yourself, you know, I have to get Mike a gift um, for Christmas that's coming up. I'll just say two things. Number one, I've never had a bad experience in New York Rangers game. Number two, Bruce Springsteen will be on tour again next year. Just, just, if you just don't know what to get me, those are just some things that I'm interested in. Um, I'm not saying you have to get me a gift or what you have to give me, but just I want to point out those two facts. So I am the person who I love Christmas but I don't like the holiday season. Now I'm not a Scrooge. I just think the holiday season is not for me. And, and, and here's the biggest thing. The biggest thing for me is Christmas music. All right. Why does every radio station, maybe it's just a New York city area thing, but why does every radio station have to play Christmas music from Thanksgiving through Christmas and even beyond? I don't like Christmas music. I'm sorry. Um, so little, little story about me is for nine years before joining student athlete world, those of you living in the Northeast, I commuted from Fairfield County, Connecticut to Westchester County, New York, every single day, sometimes six and seven days a week. That is a nightmare, right? We're talking literally at least three hours in the car every day, at least during weekdays, rush hour traffic is just brutal going through Connecticut. If you ever really want to test your patients, drive through Connecticut during rush hour. So Something I had to deal with every year for those nine years was after Thanksgiving, I essentially couldn't listen to the radio unless it was sports talk radio. Now, I have tons of CDs. I have a Bruce Springsteen CD collection that you would not believe. So I have the ability to listen to music. But sometimes, like, you know, ESPN Radio and Springsteen just didn't cut it in traffic. They, you know, let's put it way: There are songs that you could listen to in traffic that make you feel like you're not really in traffic. One example. Dua Lipa, Levitate. I'm not a Dua Lipa fan. I respect the music, right? For those of you who've seen Zoolander, um, I, I just, I can't say I'm a fan of hers, but that song gets you going. You got to rock out in the car sometimes, right, people? And I'm sitting in bumper to bumper. And it's a 45 minute pause, let's just say, in movement. And Dua Lipa, Levitating comes on. And, and I'm feeling all right for, you know, three minutes. It helps my commute. I've never felt that way about Here Comes Santa Claus. And so I just don't understand why you can't put all the Christmas music on one station for the people who want to listen to Christmas music and then have the other stations play their normal music for people like me who cannot stand Christmas music. So that's why I love Christmas, but I don't like the season, except for one song. There is a Christmas song that I believe is the greatest of all time. It's one that people don't like generally. But Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You is the greatest Christmas song of all time. And here's the reason why. It is the best trolling 
that any music artist, musician has ever done in music history. Think about the lyrics, right? Think about it for just a second. So essentially what Mariah is saying is, man, you know, it's it's been a rough year. You know, work kind of stinks. I'm stressed, tired. I don't really want to celebrate. Don't worry about me this year. I'll, I'll take anything, like just a little, you know, little nothing gift. I don't want anything. I'll just take you. Like it's, it's her way of saying, I don't want a lot for Christmas, right? That's one of the, the key lyrics. So I don't want much. My standards are low, okay? The, 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 the bar is real low this year, so you're fine. That is such awesome trolling. I love that song for that reason, all right? I really have no hopes for Christmas this year, so you come on over. You're my gift because I don't want anything. That is so awesome. I That fits my sense of humor and personality perfectly. Love that song. Mariah, you keep being you, girl. It is awesome. Um, I'll bet you when you hear that song, if you're watching this, you'll never hear that song the same way again, which means I've done my job. All right. But there's other things about the Christmas season. Why does, I don't know if it's TBS or TNT, have to play a Christmas story for 24 hours straight every day? All right. That movie isn't good the first time you see, right? And, and I, I can't stand that movie. I just can't believe there are people going to sit there watching it over and over and over again. Do that with Die Hard, which is the best Christmas movie ever. Factually, that's a fact. Proven facts in the Geneva Convention, right? Caldega Nights. Um, but, you know, I just, like, my mind says when someone doesn't say fragile anymore, they say fragile because of that movie, I, I think it should be legal to smack. That's just me. I'm not a violent person, but I hate that. So, Merry Christmas to everyone. Okay. I love the holiday. I hope everyone has a wonderful holiday. I just don't like the season. I'm glad it's almost over, but I'm excited to celebrate Christmas itself. Giants played Eagles on Christmas Day, which, I'm glad the NFL is on, but, you know, the Giants just don't match up well against the Eagles ever, so I think it's going to be an ugly game. There are just certain matchups that that happen in the NFL. The Giants always beat the Green Bay Packers, probably because they're from Wisconsin, and we all know that it's a lower standard of football. But the Giants-Eagles just bad matchup for the G-Men, but I'll be watching because I'm a fan. It's Christmas, football, love it. That's all we got. I will be back Monday, Christmas Day, for a very brief latest spin. I hope everyone has a wonderful holiday, and as always – Join the fun. Go to studentathleteworld.com. Complete your application. Interview with me. Pack your bags. Merry Christmas. Have a happy holiday. We will see everyone soon. Have a great week.